So, Ed, dirty air, something that we always hear during Formula One race weekends. It also affects other motorsport series as well. It's very much the arch nemesis of aerodynamics around the Formula One paddock. But for those that don't know, for those that are relatively new to the sport, can you just explain, give a bit of an overview of what this is and why it causes so many problems for cars when they're trying to pass? Yeah, George, just like you say, uh, everyone wants to avoid dirty air if you're a driver. And what what it is, is as, a, as an F1 car cuts through the air, it creates a wake of turbulence, which you can think of as a bunch of swirling air behind it. And this turbulent air, the swirling air is what you call uh, dirty air. Now, we're going to try and go through this in, in, in five minutes or so, maybe a little more. But we'll give you a few links if you really want to dig into this, because there's a lot of engineering, a lot of science behind it. But the best place to start is what is clean air? Because that's what a driver wants. The one that's out in the front has undisturbed air in front of them. So that's clean air. No swirls of, of, of turbulence or whatever that's created by other cars. And when you're in clean air, you get better downforce, you have better grip. It's also more efficient. There's no, uh, the, it, it can move through that air with less power. So you can have actually even higher top speed. So what happens then to the car that's following, that's in the dirty air? So now this car is hitting this turbulent, swirling air and the wings on the car are, do not function as well as they should. So you don't get the downforce. There's a loss of downforce. And that means you lose grip. You lose grip, the car becomes a little bit unpredictable. The, the grip can go up, it can go down. And so it's it's not as easy to drive. It's a, it's a much harder to drive, harder to take a chance to outbreak, say going into that turn because you're not quite sure how much grip you're gonna have. Also, as this turbulent air goes over the car, it creates a, 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 a vacuum. It creates a space behind the car where there's a lack of air because it's all flowing around. And you could think of that almost like if there's a vacuum behind the car, it's like a vacuum cleaner trying to hold that car back. So it's going to slow it down a little bit. And also because this air is all swirling around and it's not a smooth, nice flow, it can cause problems with cooling. Sometimes on a super long straightaway, you'll see an F1 car pull out and pull back so that it can get a little bit of that nice air inside to, to keep it cool. So summary is, if you're dealing with, with, with dirty air, it's going to be less efficient. Your car is going to be a little bit slower, less stable, more unpredictable. Now, why is clean air so much better? And, and here's where you can look at some of those links and videos we'll give you. But ideally, when you have a wing, and this could be on a uh, Race car could be on an airplane. You want that flow to stay attached to the wing. So you get the amount of lift you want or the amount of downforce you want. As soon as that flow gets disrupted and becomes turbulent, starts swirling around, now that that wing is not as effective at creating lift or pushing down. As I said, a lot more science behind that, but more or less, you want to keep that clean air. You want to keep the air against the surface of the wing. You want to keep the air against the surface of the car, because actually the car and the diffuser and everything underneath, the whole car acts like a wing to, to some extent. So if we get into the nature of an F1 car, I think the best way to look at this is pre uh, the rule change in 2022 and after 2022, because what happened in 2022 was there was a lot of changes made because things have gotten a little bit out of control because prior to 22, Cars had evolved to such a point where they're adding all these aerodynamic devices uh, to uh, move all this dirty air away from their car and in effect, maybe intentionally or maybe unintentionally creating a lot of dirty air behind their car. So it was hard to follow really close. If you can't follow really close, it's hard to pull up uh, behind a car and then maybe pull out and then try an outbreak. So you'd have to keep you have to keep a little bit of distance because you get that unpredictable downforce if when you got too close. So um, the what was causing all this was 
the use of things like very, very complex front wings, barge bores, vortex generators, even the design of the rear wing and the diffuser and all that also create a lot of dirty air behind the cars. And the wheels themselves, the wheels on a Formula One car, the front wheels will create all these vortices, they're called vortices or swirls of air. And a lot was being done to push those away from the wheels, push them out so that you could keep smooth air over the car body. When you push that turbulent air out, where does it go? To the car that's behind. So you want racing to be exciting. So what they did with the 22 regulations is to reduce the dirty air, and they eliminated uh, many of these uh, little devices that were being used to push air around. And also, they simplified what you could do from an, an aero design standpoint. So the things that changed were... Uh, the, they moved the downforce creation away from wings to give a greater portion of that to ground effects in the diffuser, all right? And also when the diffuser pushed the air out, it pushes it more upward. If it pushes it upward, it means you get cleaner air uh, where the car is that's following. Simplified front wings. If you look at the difference in the wings pre and post 22, all sorts of little winglets and things like that, all gone. Uh, simplified rear wings, again, to push the air up for the following car, and, and the wheels. If you notice, I got the little, the little winglets over the wheels. That also, that's a standard part, spec part, and uh, that keeps the, uh, it reduces the amount of, of dirty air as well. And the tires, they put wheel covers on there, and the wheels increase from 13 to 18 inches, and so that reduced also the amount of vertices. So, barge boards, Vortex generators, all these little things are all over the pre-22 cars, all gone. Nice, clean car. So if you're a race car driver that has wings on the car, downforce generating devices, because all this doesn't matter if you, if you don't have wings and all that on your car. If you look at NASCAR, they're all like right behind each other. They don't rely on wings uh, and, and as much as, say, Formula One. But for Formula One cars and all the cars that use these aerodynamic devices, Stay out of the dirty air and look for that clean air, which the best way to do that is just be in front of the pack. Easier said than done, I'm sure. And that and, as, and then we could we could go for a long time with this at the end of the day, but that's why you see things like, especially in qualifying, the cars are not right behind each other unless they're trying to get a toe off a teammate, for example. But in general, they'll have a big gap because they don't want to have the dirty air. They want to get as clean a lap as possible. And at the end of the day as well, you're absolutely right. You know, the... Um, you know, the regulations were simplified when it came to the wings and something like that for 2022. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we've seen more overtakes, especially around tracks where traditionally it's been impossible to overtake. Hungary and Spain, we saw loads of overtake rounds those tracks. And in the, in the past, we wouldn't do. So clearly it's working with this ground with this ground effect uh, increase of um, kind of prominence, really, when it comes to the overall grip of the car. And on top of all that as well, all these cars are designed in wind tunnels where the air is clean it's it's you know it's it's just designed that way so when they go out and the air's different when it's been disturbed as it were that's when the problems can arise and you get things like additional tire wear and stuff well and, and too, you got to remember in, in the end it's entertainment and people love seeing passing and 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 that wheel to wheel action and and that was a great rules change i think everything that you just mentioned now it's a little bit more exciting i mean sometimes you know i'm, I'm watching an f1 race and I'll, I'll fast forward to see if there's a change in the positions of the car oh wait there's a change fifth and sixth exchange or whatever but now if you look at some of the races that we've had this year especially um uh it's way way more competitive than it used to be and a lot more fun to watch Absolutely, the packs really got close together. I mean, we we saw that in Zandvoort when Kevin Magnussen got passed by like five cars on one straight and stuff like that. That just would never happen before. You know, that's an extreme example, but that would never happen before. But yeah, thanks thanks for running us through that, Ed. I mean, we, we could, like I said, we could talk about this for hours. Like I did an engineering degree. I, I spent many, many hours going through CFD and vehicle dynamics and stuff like that. So, you know, it's something we could talk about for a long time. But like Ed said as well, we're going to put some links in the description. If you're on Microsoft, unfortunately, I can't can't put links in there i would love to do that for you but um 
instead we'll we'll do it on the youtube channel if you're listening on there we'll have all the links in there for you and just do some research to your own there's some great there's some great resources out there that can go really really granular into that stuff but this is just kind of an introduction is, into what dirty air is so if you listen to the commentators this weekend uh, in in the formula one and they're saying oh he's struggling with the dirty air there he's you, ca you can't quite catch him now you know what that means um so yeah if you guys have a suggestion for a topic for us to talk through you know just just let us know in the comments we're all ears at the end of the day and uh, and yeah we'll see you soon for some very uh, some more content on the f1chronicle.com